Hello. What kind of oil filter are you running? Uh, a black one. It's the kind that fits my bike. Honestly, I don't know what's in there. Turns out there are three choices. Paper, steel, or fiberglass. And manufacturers like their black boxes. They like us to blindly believe in the performance we pay for, rather than, say, building a hydraulic test rig to call bullshit. In the end, only one of these filters is wise. Which? Witness the dialysis of oil under constant hydraulic exertion. Our first test is drag. 65% pump power, clean oil, clean filters for the same make and model. How much resistance does each type make? Paper was pushing back at 24 PSI. Might as well be using molasses for lube and that noticeably drags on your good time. Now, who would deign to lose power like that? Cheap bastards. And paper filters are just cellulose scraps glued together. Cotton, wood fiber, all stuff that's conveniently absorbent. So cellulose filters can actually pull water out of your oil to prevent rusting. Not bad for something as cheap as paper. The downside is that 24 PSI. Oil doesn't flow easily through cardboard. Next, we hook up the steel filter. Same oil, same pump power, but only 22 pounds per square inch of resistance, meaning more pound feet, marginally, to the ground. The reason there's less drag on your engine is because liquid flows fast over smooth steel wires. And that steel is unkillably tough. You can actually clean out a metal filter and reuse it like a condom. Finally, fiberglass, which costs twice as much. Same power, same oil, 25 PSI, worse than paper. Well, slap my ass and call me Patsy. And the pitch is that paper is a mess of fibers, so it traps everything, including oil flow. And steel is a precise mesh of 30 microns usually, so it traps nothing smaller, but at least oil flows easily. Fiberglass is supposed to be the best of both. It traps particulate of all sizes because it's puby, but more properly, tuby. These are glass tubes, so they're slick like steel, and oil should flow fast. That's the $20 proposition anyway. So far, fiberglass is proving no better than 10 buck paper. Our second test is capacity. Say your engine is circulating clean oil at five liters per minute, but it's an Aprilia. So there's a steady stream of metal shavings too. Now how much can each filter eat before it clogs? Because when this outflow trickles below two liters per minute, your oil starved engine could seize. Steel fails first, after only nine teaspoons of particulate. Unsurprising, steel filters are replaceable, so they must be keyed to a beefy permanent casing. And that costs volume, so the end filtration surface is smaller. 
fiberglass clogs at 14 teaspoons and paper stays above two liters per minute through 32 teaspoons. That's this much 15, 25, and 35 micron aluminum. And I guess all these folds allow paper to comfortably take a handful. I'm officially renaming it Chris Rock. Fiberglass isn't winning anyone over. Steel has high horsepower flow, but thimble-like capacity, whereas Chris Rock is the standout choice thus far. Obviously, we did not choose filters with flow release valves for this test, but you should. They look identical, but they open when filled to capacity. This way, a clogged filter can still let unfiltered oil straight through. Not ideal, since that oil is tainted with steel shavings, clutch core, gasket goo, war crimes, but like Germany, motorcycles prefer to get dirty oil than no oil at all. Our final test is efficacy. We have identical samples of used motor oil circulating at 30 PSI for six hours. It's a highway haul with a new filter. The oil will be cleaner afterwards. But how clean? We take a sample after each contestant has had its six hours of lube, like a high stamina sperm bank. These fly to the lab in Edmonton, and back comes our spectral analysis. The raw oil had a ferrous metal index of 21 and 20 parts per million of contaminants. Our steel filter got ferrous metals down to 19, but let slip all 20 PPs. Fiberglass only dropped to 20 on the PQ index, but 18 on contaminant parts per million. While paper was again the victor, it filtered our ferrous metals down to 16, and contaminants also to 16. This is one of those happy results that vindicates the cheap bastard. Paper filters are best. Steel had higher flow, but terrible capacity and poor filtration, while fiberglass failed to shine anywhere, which is unacceptable for a so-called performance upgrade. The only reason I'd buy steel is if I were street racing in Galapagos, where the high flow power is crucial, the reusability is necessary in the middle of the ocean, and with oil changes after every race, your contaminants come out in the wash. But aside from the Galapagin Grand Prix, the appeal of steel it's just not real. Fiberglass is only useful if you intend to abuse your machine. Glass doesn't degrade like paper, so if you want to use the same filter for 10 years, fine. But if you hit your maintenance intervals, as you should, there is nothing wrong with the cheapest option. In fact, in our tests, paper is best. Mm -hmm.